Welcome to Just in Time See Me, hosted by Children's Hospital Medical Center and University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. This video concerns the management of a newborn found to have hemoglobin BARTs on their newborn hemoglobin screen. Per ACCME guidelines, uh, the review, release, and expiration data are listed here. This research project is supported by a grant from the Genetic Services Branch of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. The video part of, as part of the grant and project have been approved by the Institutional Review Board of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and Children's Hospital and Medical Center. Children's Hospital and Medical Center is accredited by the Nebraska Medical Association's Commission on Medical Education to provide continuing medical education credit. Children's Hospital and Medical Center designates this activity for a maximum of one half hour of Category 1 credit. Physicians should only claim the credit commensurate with their extent of participation in this activity. Please note, we welcome you to watch this video as many times as you would like. However, you may claim credit for it only one time. I am James Harper. I am a pediatric hematologist and a consultant for the Nebraska Newborn Screening Program. My email address is here in case you have other questions. I have no pertinent disclosures. The objectives are listed here. They are to inform you of the proper steps to obtain confirmatory data, to provide you with data regarding common genetic counseling issues arising from the diagnosis, and to provide you clinical information to provide guidance to parents of affected newborns. The newborn screening result, FA plus BARTS, implies the presence of normal quantities of fetal hemoglobin and A, and also the presence of hemoglobin BARTS. Hemoglobin BARTS is made when there are four gamma globin proteins condensing because of a lack of a suitable number of alpha globins uh, being produced. Its presence implies the existence of one of the alpha thalassemia syndromes. Alpha thalassemia syndrome varies in intensity depending on the number of missing or dysfunctional alleles in the individual patient. One abnormal gene results in a condition called silent carrier. These patients are clinically normal and have normal labs. Two missing genes results in a syndrome called alpha thalassemia trait. It's a patient situation where the patient is clinically normal, however they have microcytosis and an elevated red blood cell number and may have a mild or minimal anemia. Missing three genes results in a condition called hemoglobin H disease. These patients have a more moderate anemia and persistent microcytosis throughout life. Some of these patients may be transfusion dependent to one extent or another. All four of these genes missing results in a very severe condition called alpha thalassemia major. These babies face a severe life-threatening anemia from birth. The genetics of alpha thalassemia are different than other conditions. Alpha globin's production is essential for life from the beginnings of embryonic life going forward. The number of alleles is double that of other genes. So instead of two alleles for each gene, there are actually four for this one. And all of them are active and required uh, to be functional throughout life. This condition also has an ethnicity uh, component. African Americans tend to have what is referred to as a trans uh, mutation in which there is one abnormal gene on each of their chromosomes. African Americans then have a very low likelihood of having the three or four gene uh, disease as a child from such a couple would simply inherit one abnormal chromosome from each parent, and thus they themselves have alpha thalassemia trait. In Southeast Asia and Southern China, this is a different problem. This is a much more serious public health issue because more of these groups of people have what are referred to as cis mutations, in which both of the abnormal genes are on one chromosome. A condition such as this could result in an alpha thalassemia trait patient having children with somebody with silent carrier or somebody with a similar alpha thalassemia trait. 
the result being a 25% chance that a given child would have inherited both the completely abnormal chromosome from one parent and the abnormal chromosome from the other parent, in this case resulting in hemoglobin H disease, and in this case resulting in alpha thalassemia major. These patients then are a much higher need for genetic counseling and analysis than the African American patient. So, you are at the confirmatory state. When you receive word from the lab or the newborn screening program of an abnormal screen, you must provide a conf obtain a confirmatory test. When ordering this from the regional lab, you can order a hemoglobin confirmation newborn. Please don't order a standard hemoglobin electrophoresis as this oftentimes uh, is more expensive and it does not necessarily um, quantify the uh, hemoglobin BARTs as we would like. The rationale for confirmatory screening is to confirm that the right specimen and baby were drawn the first time and to evaluate a baby using a different method of hemoglobin analysis to look for um, variant hemoglobins or other um, uh, anomalies. You may have received this from the newborn screening program when you receive the results. This is the American College of Medical Genetics ACT sheet. And you note this one is for FA plus BARTS, which is an alpha thalassemia syndrome. There'll be a differential diagnosis here, a description here, a list of things you should do now, and then some diagnostic evaluation and clinical considerations. If you do not receive one from the newborn screening program, this can be downloaded from the American College of Medical Genetics homepage at acmg.net. Based on this act sheet, you should take the following actions now. First, you should contact the family and inform them of the screen result. Second, you should evaluate the infant, assessing for a splenomegaly, do a complete blood count, uh, looking for hemoglobin and mean corpuscular volume, order the hemoglobin confirmation newborn, then consult with a specialist in hemoglobin disorders and refer if needed. We're happy to take phone consults from you um, and we will happily see the child um, in person if you need. You should initiate timely confirmatory and diagnostic testing as recommended by the consultant and you should report the findings to the newborn screening program. This is an example of the diagnostic algorithm supported by the American College of Medical Genetics. As you notice here, the child's at the level of confirmatory study. If the confirmatory study also shows hemoglobin BARTs, we move to this pathway. The ACMG supports quantitative hemoglobin analysis for BARTs hemoglobin. If less than 25% hemoglobin BARTs, no further testing is required. However, if there's more than 25% BARTs, this child is suspicious for hemoglobin H or other more severe forms of alpha thalassemia syndrome and should be seen by a specialist in hemoglobin disorders. Quantitative hemoglobin BARTs has an analytic difficulty in that it is a fast moving protein and it frequently is lost in the waste of the machine um, making quantification errors common. Um, genetic analysis and family studies uh, are preferable, if available, uh, to quantify the hemoglobin H in the child as well as to quantitate parents' studies um, and determine what their risks for future children are. Alpha thalassemia trait is the most common of these. Alpha thalassemia trait occurs in approximately 10% of African Americans and frequently more than that in Southeast Asian populations. Clinically, this condition is asymptomatic. It is common to diagnose a parent who has this condition and because we find the child has it on their newborn screening program. And because this is asymptomatic, this has no normal effect on well-baby or well-child care schedules. 
that has no impact on sports or school performance um, or job performance. Laboratory-wise, this is an important condition to note in a child's record. This child will have a lifelong microcytic anemia. The anemia may well not be very severe, and in fact, he may be normal most of the time. However, he will be persistently microcytic throughout the course of his life. In addition, he will have an elevated red blood cell number. This will show a high red cell number in response to the small, inadequately hemoglobinized red cells being produced, uh, and the elevated red cell number will be in response to erythropoietin drive because of the decreased oxygen carrying capacity. In the future care of this child, um, it may come to concern that he may have iron deficiency, and this can be evaluated quickly using what's called a Menser's index. If you divide the MCV number by the red cell number, you can get a uh, result from that ratio. If the uh, Menser's index is greater than 13, you think iron deficiency. If it is less than 13, you think alpha thalassemia trait. So, where to go for patient information? Cooley's Anemia Foundation, named for Dr. Cooley, who first described thalassemia in the Western literature, has an excellent website with um, information available in a number of languages for both alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. You can click here on the link and be taken to their uh, information. For live references, you can call the Newborn Screening Program at 402-471-0374. You can obtain a hematology consultation at 402-559-7257. And you can obtain a genetic counseling um, consult at 402-559-6418. And then guidance for parents. Alpha thalassemia trait is common particularly in African Americans and in Asians. It is rarely severe enough to cause symptoms. It will not result in disability at, in the, for their child. Their baby's microcytosis will never be normal. They should write this diagnosis down in their child's baby book or other records so that their child will know they have this condition um, later in life. Genetic counseling is particularly important for Asian families as they are at risk for the more severe problems, um, hemoglobin H and alpha thalassemia major. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Your feedback regarding this video is highly appreciated. To leave feedback, suggest new topics, or learn about CME activities at Children's Hospital and Medical Center, as well as to register for the CME credit for this presentation, Go to childrensomaha.org slash medical education. Thank you again. Good day.